hope you are staying safe at home. All right, last time we have talked about uh, media uh, as one of the measures of central tendency. Of course, you remember that measures of central tendency has three indices, the mean, median, and then mood. And so today we are going to talk about mood as the third measure of central tendency. Mood has a symbol, capital M, and small o at the foot of that M. Mood is often defined as the most occurring score. It is often defined as the most occurring score. It can also be defined, especially for group data, as a class interval with the highest frequency. Most times, mood is referred to as a measure of uh, popularity. It is referred to as measure of popularity because it shows how popular a score or a class interval is, according to Professor uh, Assel uh, in his book that we are using, that mood is a measure of uh, popularity. Now, the mood of an ungrouped data cannot be calculated. It will be a waste of time. It is identified or observed. And so the mood of an ungrouped data can be obtained through identification or through observation. Through observation, through identification, you can just see, especially from group data, the score with the highest frequency or the most occurring score. Now, mode, whether for group data or group data, maybe unimodal, unimodal, U-N-I hyphen M-O-D-A-L, meaning that that data have only one mode. If a data has two mode, it is said to be bimodal, meaning that two scores, of course, have the highest uh, frequency or occurring more than, uh, more times than others. Mode can also be multimodal if it is more than two. If the scores in a data, our class in tower, has three highest occurring scores, we say it is multimodal. However, we say that um, the mode of an ungrouped data cannot be calculated, but the mode of a group data can be calculated. It can be calculated. And the formula for calculating mode of a group data is MO, meaning mode, is equal to L plus FM minus F1 times W all over FM minus F1 plus FM minus F2. Uh, and what does that formula mean? L, uh, M stands for mood. L, L stands for lower real limit of the class interval containing the mood. Lower real limit of the class interval containing the mood. FM stands for frequency of the class interval. FM stands for frequency of the class interval with the highest frequency. Frequency of the class interval with the highest frequency, that is FM. F1 stands for frequency of the class interval above the uh, class interval with the highest frequency. F2 stands for frequency of the class interval uh, above, please. FM, F1 stands for frequency of the class interval above why F2 stands for frequency of the class interval below the class interval containing the mode. Why W stands for class width or class uh, size. Now, there are steps that may be utilized in calculating uh, mode of a grouped data. The first one is to form three columns. Form three columns. And then step two, in column one, indicate class intervals. Step three, in column two, indicate the true real or exact class limits. Step four, in column three, indicate frequency and sum. Step five, identify lower real limit of the class interval containing the mode. Step six, indicate the FM, F1, and F2. Of course, I have told us the meaning of the 
this uh, uh, notation. FM is the frequency of the class interval containing the mode. And then F1 is the frequency of the class interval directly below the class interval containing the mode. YF2 is the frequency of the class interval directly above the class interval containing the mode. Then step seven is to identify the class width or class size. Of course, we have been talking about this. Why for many of class intervals you use three, five, 10, 15, as the case may be. And then step eight, apply the formula. Mode is equal to L plus FM minus F1 times W all over FM minus F1 plus FM minus F2. Now, example, there's an example here. Say, calculate the mode of the following scores. 5, 8, 7, 6, 20, 21, 18, 17, 16, 12, 14, 13, 10, 9, 8, 11, 14, 5, 15, 17, 9, 9 again, 10, 11, and then 17. Now you start with the first step. Say, form three columns. The three columns are formed here. Column 1, 2, and 3. And then in, the, in column one, you arrange class intervals. The class intervals are already arranged. Five to seven, eight to 10, 11 to 13, 14 to 16, 17 to 19, 20 to 22. And then in the second column, say arrange true, real, or exact class limit. That's what I've been doing. How do you get this score? Subtract 0 0.5 from the lower class boundary it will now be 4.5, and then up, add it to the, uh, that's 0 0.5 to the upper class boundary, and you have 7.5, like that for all of them. For instance, for this class interval, 8 to 10, so class 0 0.5, you have 7.5, add it to the upper class boundary, you have 10.5, that is the principle, and then you follow it to the, uh, the last class uh, interval. And then the frequencies here, uh, it shows how many times each of the class interval scores in each class interval occur in the distribution. Five to seven appear four times, eight to 10 appear seven times, 11 to 13 appear four times, 14 to 16 appear four times, 17 to 19 appear four times, 20 to 22 appear twice. If you add up, you have uh, 25. These three columns are needed in calculating mode. Now, after preparing this table, you now go to look at the frequency column. Please remember that mode always talk about class interval with the highest frequency. Now, if you go to the, this frequency column, you see that seven is highest here. Seven is bigger than four and two. So seven is the highest frequency. And the class interval that has it is called the modal class. And so the modal class is here is 8 to 10. The modal class is 8 to 10. That is our modal class or the class interval containing the mode. And so that 7 is, is the FM. 7 is the FM. Now you check again. F1 stands for class interval directly below the class interval containing the mode or the modal class. Now that F1 here is 4. And then you check again, F2 is the, class, the frequency of the class interval directly above the class interval containing the mode. And that is 11 to 13. And so the three indices we are interested in is 4, 7, and 4 again. Now, there are some situations that uh, the, class the first class interval may have the highest frequency. Let's assume that, uh, just for emphasis, here we have seven and here we have four. It means that here will be the FM. Uh, it will have F1 again, but it will have F2. In that case, the F1 will be zero, automatically taken as zero because it's non-existent. I've just explained this for emphasis. And then if it occurs in the last class interval, 
let's assume that uh, let's assume that uh, this seven is here. Now, what you have here is FM. It will only have F1, and then F2 will be zero. I have to explain this to make it uh, very clear to you, because questions would arise in that uh, direction. And so, using the data that we have now, you have uh, uh, seven here. Here is uh, F1, and this FM, and this uh, F2. Okay. Now that we have identified FM, F1, and F2, you now apply the formula. Mode. Look at the formula again. And of course, the lower rate limit of that passing interval containing the mode is 7.5. And so our L in that formula is 7.5. FM is 7. And so F1 is 4. And that's why you have 7 minus 4 times. Three. This three stands for the class size. Remember that each of these class intervals consists of three scores. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three. Each of them has three scores. And that's why the class size of the class width is a uh, three. And then F, M again is seven. F1 is four plus F1, FM is seven minus F2 again is four. Incidentally, in this data, both F1 and F2 is just four. It's not like that all the time. So you must take time to identify the F1 and the F2. For emphasis, F1 is the frequency of the class interval directly below the modal class or the class interval containing the highest uh, frequency. Why F2 is the class is the frequency of the class interval uh, that has the highest frequency or uh, directly above the modal class. That was our interpretation. Now. Going back to our calculation, you bring this 7.5 plus 7 minus 4 will give you 3 times the class width, which is already 3, all over 7 minus 4 is 3, plus 7 minus 4 again is 3. And then you have 7.5, bring it down, plus 3 times 3 is 9, all over 6 plus, uh, 3 plus 3, which is 6. And then you have 7.5 plus 9 divided by 6 will give you 1.5. And that's the 1.5 you are seeing here. So 7.5 plus 1.5 is uh, 9. And so incidentally, 9 is the mode of this data. And for you to be uh, uh, sure that what you have calculated is uh, correct, you go back, look at the 9, go back the class interval that has the highest uh, uh, frequency is 8 to 10. And so this 9 still fall into this uh, class uh, interval, actually indicating that the answer is correct. Most cases, we are talking about uh, graphic presentation of data, such as bar chart, uh, especially histogram. Uh, now, in a histogram, instead of going through this calculation, the mode can just be estimated from a histogram. What do you do? You look at uh, all the uh, rectangles or bars, the, the one that have the highest, and then you are able to either determine its midpoint or and then you take it as uh, the mode of that uh, data. What I'm trying to explain to you now is that most cases, mode can be estimated directly from a histogram instead of going through this uh, calculation. Uh, there are some characteristics of mode, as you can see. Number one is that it is the easiest measure of central tendency to calculate. Calculation of mode is not usually difficult, especially that of ungrouped data that does not even require any calculation. It can just be obtained through identification or observation. And then again, mode is uh, mode is less influenced or affected by extreme scores. It is usually not uh, affected so much by extreme scores. Another characteristic of mode again uh, is that uh, it's unstable. Mode is unstable. And uh, that is why you can see that it is not unique. A data may have two mode. It may have three mode. In that case, it's bimodal and multimodal as the case may be. And then mode 
always go along with range. Two of them, they are very unstable and they go together. Mode, in a range accepts uh, uh, mode. When they want to determine measure of dispersion for mode, it's usually range that goes easiest with it. And finally, the mode is not used for further calculation. Unlike uh, mean that is used in calculating details and ANOVA, mode is not used again for further calculation. It is just calculated as one of the measures of central tendency. Stay safe, be careful, observe all the hygienic practices from health practitioners. Coronavirus is real, but it will not be for you and for members of your family. Thank you.